Hello and welcome to this course on Advanced Cyber Threat and Incident Management. I'm Professor Wool and in this lesson we'll discuss how to bring business context into incident response. So let's begin with a quick review of how incident response works currently. So most organizations have a large variety of sources of logs coming from various security systems such as antivirus, mail filters, firewalls, authentication systems and many other systems. All of these generate logs that feed into the security information and event management system or SIEM uh, where they're stored and searched so either through automatic logic or through uh, analysts sifting through the information and searching for suspicious activity and when such a suspicious activity is identified either automatically or manually a case is opened and the people in the security operations center later review this case and need to decide uh, if it's real or not and what to do about it. And the information that the people in the SOC usually see is a collection of logs like this that were found somehow in the scene. Uh, and all of them together indicate some kind of strange situation. Here we can see, for instance, uh, activity at a strange time of the day, so Sunday, 3 o'clock in the morning, and we can see that a particular IP address is generating failed login attempts, it's trying to connect to other systems, it's trying to access a blocked website, uh, and maybe other things. So all of these together um, seem to raise a red flag and the people in the security operations center need to, do, to decide what to do about it. Um, and they have a variety of choices uh, available to them. They could decide, for instance, to ignore all of this because maybe it's a false alarm or they could decide to take a blocking action, um, basically disconnect the server or the desktop here uh, using a firewall or a network filter somehow, maybe physically disconnect it from the wire or power it down, maybe schedule a disk wipe and restore from backup because apparently the system is owned by malware of some sort. And then there's a sub-question of when to take the action. Uh, should we do it now? Should we do it later on today, next week, at the weekend? It all depends on the severity of the threat that's being detected there and also on the importance of that particular system. Now the challenge that the SOC has is that they really have very little limited information about what this IP address stands for. However, in other parts of the organization, the information does exist. So if we look at what's going on outside of the SOC in different areas, we can see that most organizations have an application connectivity manager. This is a repository where every business application and business process that's owned by the organization is documented. And we can see that, for instance, the payroll application appears in the connectivity manager. And the payroll application relies on various connectivity from uh, some servers to some other servers using a variety of services. Uh, so there is a documentation of the connectivity, but associated with that information is also metadata identifying the owner of this payroll application and critical times of the month in which uh, the system is really busy, uh, typically at the end of the month or the beginning of the next month because that's when payroll is being cut. So this information does exist in the organization. And the point I'm trying to make is that it would be really useful if the people in the SOC, when they're investigating this incident, they could look at this IP address that's apparently being attacked or is, is owned by malicious software and query the databases that the application connectivity manager has um, to identify that this particular IP address is really one of the servers that the, the payroll application relies on to do its job. Uh, once that in connection is available and the incident has business context, it's possible to make much more informed decisions what to do about it. For instance, you can uh, look at the calendar and say, well, okay, today we're at the beginning of the month, it's not a good idea to shut down the payroll system today, maybe we'll wait a day or two because the threat doesn't seem to be terrible and the system is really important right now, so maybe it's good enough temporarily to just block access externally using the network filters and schedule the wipe to a later time. 
So the point is making business connectivity context into the incident response process gives us the power to make much more informed and correct decisions. Thank you for your attention.